Hello and uh, welcome to our virtual presentation at the EGU this year on the uh, OpenAR Sandbox system, a system for haptic as a haptic interface for geoscience education and outreach. We can only be here virtually this year, as we all know, um, which is quite a shame because it would have been nice to set up one of these systems actually at EGU, um, at a poster or something to show you how this works, how it operates, how you can interact with the system. We kind of do this live, so at least I thought uh, we have a bit of a video presentation to show you some of the features that we have implemented here. Um, let's start with this idea behind this sandbox. And what this is all about. So um, what are these systems, how are the systems set up? This is technically, uh, as it says already in, this, in the name, the sandbox is nothing but a, a box of sand uh, in an essence down here. Uh, a box filled with sand, but then this is augmented with additional aspects. How is this working? But in the first stage we have our, uh, our sandbox and then we have up here in the system a laser uh, a scanner. And this can be something like a standard uh, Microsoft Connect. You know, these, these systems you may know from uh, gaming uh, systems from the Xbox. It can also be a bit more advanced, like these uh, newer types of sensors, like the LiDAR scanners that you can now obtain uh, for systems for computers. So we, we scan the sand surface and then we pass the signal into some sort of a processing unit. So we have a computer in the background for data processing. We calculate some content and we project this content back into onto the sand surface uh, with a standard projector. Then we can go ahead and actually, uh, you know, dig into the system and uh, and change uh, the sand surface. We interact with the system, and this triggers again an update of our sensor scanning, uh, updates the calculation and the projection back onto our sand surface. This is the idea behind these uh, so-called augmented reality sandbox systems, and this is not new. This idea has been around for uh, for more than a decade by now. It's best known from this uh, example of the uh, so-called um, uh, geomorph geomorphology sandbox. So this idea uh, actually was implemented in, in a software by UC Davis. This software is quite widely used. You can go and download it from, the, from their website. Uh, the original idea goes back even further to a Czech company, which um, has some, some YouTube videos on this already in 2010, I think. Um, but these systems are actually developed uh, and employed, uh, installed, sorry, at many universities worldwide, in, in, um, in schools, in museums. Uh, you can see them already in many types of installations. They are fantastic, um, specifically when you want to look at features like topography, uh, when you want to discuss things like geomorphology maybe, or surface flow because you can actually dig channels into your sandbox and you can let it rain and you see and you have a nice simulation of this water flow in the system. There are also in the meantime commercial systems that you can obtain uh, which have all kinds of games implemented so you have some you know dinosaurs projected onto the sand uh, or some other aspects of some other features um, and these are these are fun these are nice to interact with to play for kids but of course, we asked ourselves, how can we use these systems for, uh, you know, geologists, geological uh, education, um, for, for teaching? How can we make use of these systems in a bit more versatile way? So here's the idea. Um, this is our contribution. We wanted to extend the capabilities of these sandbox systems to allow us a wider range of applications. So how do we do that? Well, the first uh, aspect of our developments is in the processing part. So in the left side here of our, our data processing aspects. And uh, what do we do? Well, we, the, the essential core of it is that we extended this uh, functionality or we implemented the functionality of these sandbox systems completely in Python, with the front end in Python. Underneath, you may have still some uh, C codes running for specific uh, purposes. But the, uh, the front end is fully implemented in Python, which enables you a very low entry level, uh, a low hurdle basically into developments in these systems. To make it even simpler, we actually have a set of Jupyter notebooks at front, as front ends. For those of you who don't know what they are, they are basically um, interfaces to Python code that's running on your machine, but in a standard browser window. And you can see here on the right side, just as an example, where we still have code and visualization inside. 
but we also have complete interaction panels and widgets which basically give you a graphical user interface for uh, the sandbox content. Um, we also have, through this implementation in Python, we have a direct access to this huge Python interface of modeling methods. And specifically implemented in our case is a link to a 3D geomodeling software called GemPy, which we also develop in our group. In Aachen, we have links to geophysical simulations with PyGimli. Um, we have examples of data analysis purely in NumPy and SciPy. We have also examples of links to uh, external simulation packages that I'm going to show you. And I mean, we have also an extension to machine learning uh, libraries like PyTorch and TensorFlow. And uh, the list could just go on because there is such a wide range in the meantime of awesome uh, open source uh, packages in, in, in Python, uh, which you can use and potentially combine with this idea of this open AR sandbox system. In addition to this computation aspect, we also uh, did some development on the interaction. And that's something which uh, is, I think, also giving you new possibilities to interact now with these systems. Um, in addition to basically interacting with the sand surface, which is a very natural way of interacting, we implemented a RUCO markers and detection. So how does it work? Basically, well, these systems are uh, literally little, little, you know, something like QR codes that you can print out. Uh, we also have in open air sandbox, a little uh, method to generate these things. And you can place them now into your uh, box, your sandbox and trigger some sort of um, uh, modeling aspect with it. For example, simple case say, you know, one here, one there, draw a cross section between those two lines. Or you place it in one stage and say, give me a virtual drill hole at this position. Or we can use them as seed points for simulation content, for example, for landslide simulations. Or as electrodes uh, to determine position of electrodes in a geophysical simulation, other measurement devices in geophysical simulations, and so on. So what does it look like? An example here in action, we see the sand surface, we see these Aruko markers being placed. And you see how we actually now detect, uh, the system detects these markers and draws lines in between. Uh, this is fed back to the system, so you can use this information now for any types of purposes. Okay, let's look at actually a challenge now uh, that we are all facing in, in geoscience education, uh, in geology specifically, when you know these classes on uh, geological maps. Uh, we always teach our students to look at geological maps and to, to think uh, in a sense also at some stage to see how these structures extend into the subsurface. So what we are training students on is basically, okay, this is your initial map. What does the uh, full 3D model underlying it look like? So we want to get from this 2D to 3D view. And that's something which we now can actually uh, somehow mimic in this context of our sandbox system. And that's something which we worked on quite a bit. So we combined this open air sandbox system with our geological modeling software called GemPy, again implemented in Jupyter notebooks with controls over widgets. And this allows us now to basically uh, get access to a full and, and really powerful 3D modeling software, which is underlying our um, uh, Python system here and allows it for direct interaction and model update. What does it look like now in 3D? Uh, sorry, in 3D in the sandbox. So yes, 3D haptic system. You see that we have now here these layers. So the colors represent geological formations. Uh, we see now this is a representation of this model here. You see that you have this interaction. So you can simply move this model around on a touch screen. Uh, this is the corresponding, um, in this case, a Benison map, um, which you may know from uh, classes on structural modeling or geological maps and models. And we can build this model now also in a workflow here. So we link basically GemPy into the system. This is something which requires some additional training maybe, but that's, uh, as I said, already a really powerful engine below uh, our modeling. We see here the model now in 3D. And now this is again projected into, uh, into the sandbox. You can see we can place markers to say, you know, now draw me a cross section maybe uh, on the screen. And most importantly, it allows you to dig into your model. So you can see we can interact here. You can dig down into the sand and you can see how the model is directly updated and shows you what the geological layer at depth would be. And this gives you a very nice set of tools for teaching in class. So here now we are digging into it. You see that the model is updated. 
we see this fault over here and we see how our model is now updated around this fault. So quite a nice set of ways to not only show students, okay, this is what your model would look like in 3D, but also to ask questions. Let's say you have now uh, at some spot uh, a layer of interest, the depth. You can ask how deep is it? You can do the classical calculations to determine how, you know, a dipping layer, where would you intersect it? And then you can actually dig into it and test and, and, and see if this is correct. So it's a very nice haptic way to interact with these concepts uh, in, in 3D. Of course, as I said, it doesn't stop there. We have uh, links to a geophysical library, PyGimli, uh, also a fantastic open source library in this uh, with, with, a, with a Python front end. Um, and in this case, what do we do? Actually, we don't consider the sandbox now as an elevation field, but as a parameter field of geophysical parameters. And then we simulate, in this case now here, a geoelectrical field and project this back onto our sand surface. So what does this look like? Um, we take this uh, model, have also a little movie here. Uh, we place our RUCO markers, as I said before, as basically the electrode positions. Uh, you can see the geophysical field. We change it now, we move the marker, we update the simulation and we get our updated uh, geoelectrical field projected into our sandbox. Additional possibilities, as I said, we can use this uh, surface in quite a variety of, of realistic or even um, abstract ways or, as a, or really as an elevation field. Examples are simply calculations of gradients. So we can simply say, let's calculate the gradient of our, uh, of our field and, and project it back onto the surface. And that's quite nice because we do these calculations, of course, in, uh, in class. We can calculate things like uh, relief shading. So what you see over here is an artificial uh, relief shade. Uh, basically, we are moving uh, a lamp artificially to see how, uh, how it would cast, how this specific model would cast a shadow um, if there would be a real lamp. We can also link this to landslide simulations, as I said. That's the work we're doing with uh, Julia Kowalski and her group together. So basically, you see here an example of an underlying uh, landslide simulation. We are triggering a landslide. I removed the Aruko marker in here at the top, but we can basically des decide this is where we start our landslide. You know, place a couple of houses in there for some, uh, maybe some teaching uh, to, to give it some relevance uh, or term, some uh, scale maybe. And then uh, we can start to simulate how this landslide would occur and how it would uh, maybe, you know, lead to um, a disaster or not in the place of your village. Also, some, uh, some fun thing which we've done is we link this to uh, an artificial neural network, to a, uh, a generative adversarial network, to be precise, which we trained on um, satellite images. So what we can do is basically we can create a surface elevation field. Uh, we run this through our network and generate an artificial satellite image that fits to this surface to this elevation field. So we see this right now here, updated uh, our, um, our elevation model, and now we have something which looks like a satellite image. Not perfect, a lot of room for improvement, but just to show you some of the, the fun things we can do with this, uh, this system. We can also use it for quite more abstract ways, a bit like in this case of geophysics. What we are modeling here is a posterior distribution in a sense. So we consider the elevation surface as a distribution. And then we see here a sampling algorithm. In this case, it's an MCMC -MC algorithm, which slowly starts to sample points in this space. And we can go uh, to explain things like um, optimization algorithms, gradient descent, and so on. And you can change, you can easily change your model and see you know, where your algorithm may get stuck, what is the difference between global, local optimization, and so on. Uh, so, uh, in summary, we think these uh, sandboxes in general are a fantastic way to interact and to engage uh, with content in 3D. Of course, it has already been really successful in many applications worldwide in these, you know, in these, in these geomorphology sandboxes. Uh, with OpenAR Sandbox, we want to help making these systems a lot more uh, available to, the, to, to other types of applications. We also think it's, uh, it's quite a fun way because it has this link to uh, the implementation set in Python, which makes it easy to use. You can also think of uh, maybe programming classes, people to generate new content for the sandbox. Um, we have a whole set of almost graphical user interfaces in Jupyter notebooks, but this makes it very easy to interact, especially when you have a touch screen next to it. 
Uh, we have this uh, link to geomodeling using GemPy that I mentioned before. And as I said, you have access through the implementation of Python to this vast uh, ecosystem of, of Python methods that are around there. Uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, just to mention a couple of things, but also all kinds of other types of simulations that we use in geosciences. And we have this additional level of interaction. As I mentioned, these are RUCO markers, which give you a very nice way to interact and to uh, even more, like have, have a more type of interaction with the sandbox than just by changing the elevation field itself. So we think, as I said, a fantastic tool for teaching and outreach. Uh, I hope I could uh, um, raise some interest uh, to you. The system is free. It's uh, available as an open source project on our website. Uh, if you look at um, CTRE, there's more information, CTRE, Aachen.de. This uh, project is hosted on GitHub. Uh, please make use of it as well. If you use it, uh, please uh, create a fork. Um, and if you change it, create a fork. And so we see that you're actually using it. It's a, a nice way to see how it's evolving. If you do some additions, it is a very, uh, a very open license that we're using in here. But we also ask you, of course, if you do some changes, please um, provide them back to the original repository, create a pull request, and, and you can you know, contribute to growing the system even more. If you are interested in a commercial setup, um, there are many possibilities around. We have one which is dedicated to these types of geological modeling methods uh, by Terranigma Solutions. Have a look at this website if you want to see a, a commercial setup of the system or if you don't want to go into details on how to set these things up. If you are interested in doing this yourself for teaching and so on, you know, there, are, there are also very nice instructions online on how you can set up one of these systems, basically with a bit of um, uh, some hand, handcraft working at home or in your lab. Thanks for watching and uh, enjoy the rest of the EGU and hopefully we will meet again at some stage uh, in, in a physical setting in some conference in the future. Stay safe.